Make us a shining light to this dark world of sin, that the whole world might see the glory of thy name. May we bring a word of hope to the nations, thy word of life to the people of the earth. The Just Advocate. First Bible lesson, Luke 18, 18 through 19. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Second Bible lesson, Romans 3, 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Golden text, 1 John 1, 8 through 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. None is righteous. Brethren, this gospel shall expose the follies of the entire world. No man is guiltless. The only source of salvation is for man to be remorseful of his sins as advised in the golden text. If man in the past had been admitting his sinfulness and consequently prayed for forgiveness, he would not have been plagued with numerous problems as it is now. Our deliverance and salvation come from this gospel. The second lesson records that there is none who is righteous. This is proven in the gospel of John 8, 3 through 11. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus says unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. The significance of that event is to indicate the fact that all men are sinners. Therefore, if human beings were to know that there is none who is righteous, no person would ever impute sins upon the other. They would rather show remorse and go on their knees and pray for forgiveness. That was one of the reasons our Lord Jesus Christ said, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thine brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thine brother's eye. Matthew 7, 3-5 Therefore there is no justification in telling someone to refrain from sins when you are wallowing in sins. You cannot behold and recognize any act of sinfulness in another person if you have not committed such sins. David in one of his prayers said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Psalms 51, 5 in fact, this should be our solemn contemplation daily. If you see yourself in this way, you will be able to pray for the forgiveness of those sins. We are fond of calling our Lord Jesus Christ a good friend of man. Here he says that there is none righteous. Why then do you impute sins upon one another? Right now, if you see yourself as a sinner and show remorse, you will have peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the truth and speaks the truth, but he never accepted to be called good master. Right from Adam up till now, man has been sinful. That is why the golden text states that, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In spite of the above text, no one admits the fact that he is a sinner. When King Solomon erected a temple unto God, he prayed him to forgive any Israelite, 
who after committing a sin would run into the place for the remission of sin. Read 1 King 8, 44-50. In essence, Solomon knew that there is no one who does not commit sin, so he calls for the forgiveness of such sins. What is the meaning of the statement? And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Matthew 23, 12. The meaning is that if you see yourself as a sinner and repent, God will forgive you and wash you clean through the blood of his begotten son. But if you see yourself as a righteous person, then your sins will remain with you. It is for that reason that our Lord Jesus Christ told the Pharisees that, and Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. John nine thirty nine through 41 The whole of our body belongs to God, and there is nothing you can do other than to admit that you are a sinner and pray for your forgiveness. The key to your salvation is the admission and confession of all your sins. When there is repentance, there is forgiveness. If you pray to God like the publican who admitted that he is a sinner, then your salvation is sure. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much of his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. See yourself not as God's son, but as his unpaid servant like the prodigal son then he will forgive you and cleanse you of all your iniquities. The prodigal son, when he came to his senses, acknowledged his iniquities and went back to his father in tears and on bended knees pleading for forgiveness. Read Luke fifteen twenty through 21 He was thus forgiven, and his status as a son was restored to him. The publican and Mary Magdalene, who admitted their sinfulness and prayed God for pardon, obtained the same forgiveness. Some attributes of a person who has refrained from sin are that such a fellow does not impute sin upon another. He does not discriminate, tell lies, judge others, and does not indulge in any act that is sinful. He also listens very attentively to the words of God. He does not ask questions and only thanks God for everything. Even the Pharisees and the scribes who went before our Lord Jesus Christ with the woman caught in adultery having realized that they themselves were unrighteous, departed one after the other. Impute no sin on others. There is no gain in admitting that you are a sinner, yet you continue to impute sins upon others. As a sinner, your duty is to bring together all sinners, pacify them, and continue to pray to God for forgiveness. If you judge another person, you are judging yourself. Unfortunately, Everybody is claiming to be a righteous person who comes from a Christian or godly home. First Bible lesson, Luke 18, 18 through 19. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Humility that is worthy of emulation. Brethren, have you ever heard or witnessed such humility as exhibited by our Lord Jesus Christ? He was called good master, but he rebuked the ruler. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but God. If it were you, you would have accepted that title and went ahead to demand for more appellations. The true name of the Father is not God, but good. God's other names include perfect master, excellence, Lord, to mention but a few. No man should carry an exalted tag as his excellency on his name, for none is excellent but God. This God who is the most excellent being has come to change you and lead you to the accurate wisdom of truth. Sinfulness does not end with going out to steal, fornicate, and tell lies and to indulge in other evils. Man by nature is a bunch of sins. He was conceived in evil and born in iniquities. To show you how perfect God is, he makes his son to rise on evil and on the good and send rain on the just and on the unjust. How many people could do this? Matthew five forty-five. None. 
Instead, everyone is bent on retaliating another. If you retaliate, you have gone against the will of God. On the other, to be forgiving and charitable does not mean that you are not a sinner. If you are exalted by God, that does not stop you from being a sinner. Therefore, if you are exalted, do not seek ways and means of debasing another. If you humble yourself after being exalted, you will continue to enjoy God's forgiveness. But if you become pompous, then you will have yourself to blame. The highest thing to do is to admit that you are a sinner. Then the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ will be used to cleanse you and purge you of every manner of sins. Henceforth, do not claim to be good or come from a God-fearing family, for God alone is the perfect being. There is no man who knows himself, and therefore there is nothing good in him. It should be noted that man was made from the dust of the earth, which is filled with dirt. For this reason, he cannot exist without the traits of this dirt in him. However, if you expose these dirts with a penitent heart, you will be forgiven. Second Bible lesson, Romans 3, 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Christ died to redeem us. The second Bible lesson only confirms the statement recorded in the first lesson. Before the advent of Christ, people had thought that there was a righteous person on earth. Until our Lord Jesus Christ came and died for the sins of the world, no one believed that man is filled with sin. But the Holy Spirit has come to remind us that we are all sinners. Amongst the angels and men, there is none righteous except God. To say, therefore, that somebody is righteous and good is false. For you also to say that you are a good person reveals that you are a liar and there is no salvation for you. Whoever claims to be righteous has invariably made Christ a liar and has forfeited his salvation. For the words of the Lord have no roots to him. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his words is not in us. 1 John 1 10 The Lord did not come to die for the righteous, but for the sinners. Therefore, if you accept that you are a sinner, then his precious blood will cleanse you. That is why it is said that when our Lord Jesus Christ comes, he will have nothing to do with sinners, but he will come for them that are ready for him. These are those who see themselves as sinners. God does not exalt you because of your money and power. You are exalted, blessed, and cleansed only if you admit the fact that you are a sinner. It is for this reason that God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. 1 Corinthians 1, 27-28 This he does so that man would not boast of himself. Your boast should be in the Lord. If you were to realize the efficacy of the words of God, you would not ask God to punish any person nor curse him. Are you not a sinner or do you want your sins to remain with you? Man has got to be contented with his status in life. No matter how lowly place you may be, do not commit offense and ask God questions. It is profitable to obey God and surrender oneself to him, for without him you are an empty vessel. It is God that operates in man. If you admit your sins and be penitent over them, then God who is your source of everything will take care of you. Whoever claims to be sinless is comparing himself and competing with God. On the other hand, when he admits that he is a sinner and does not impute sins upon another, he is a real child of God. Golden Text, 1 John 1, 8 through 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Spiritual Chorus I am a sinner, Lord wash me clean. The song confirms that statement of our Lord Jesus Christ that there is none righteous except God. He went further to say that whosoever says he is righteous is a liar, and no truth can be found in him. That is the only gateway to heaven and source of our salvation. If you do not impute sins upon others, you do not also have to curse them and ask God to punish or kill them. God out of his mercy forgives us. No amount of money could buy us such forgiveness. The problem between God and man is that 
Anytime man exalts himself and disobeys God, he has to be debased. Many people like to recount many good things they have done to others, but which they have been negatively rewarded. Such a statement is not encouraging. No man is capable of doing anything to another person. It is God alone that has the ability to do everything unto man. If you see yourself as a sinner, you will submit to God. You will humble yourself. You will not judge or condemn anybody, and you will not request anything from God. You will behave like David who admitted his sins and said, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Psalms 51, 2 through 5. A stroke of a cane is sufficient for the wise. Let those who have ears hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the entire world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, good Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Delivered by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu. Compiled by George Morales. Voiceover by Shantaria. May cause a shining light to this dark world of sin. That the whole world might see the glory of thy name. May we bring a word of hope to the nations. Thy word of life to the people of the earth May cause a shining light To this dark world of sin That the whole world might see The glory of thy name May we bring the world of hope to the nations Thy word of life to the people of the earth May cause a shining light To this dark world of sin that the whole world might see the glory of thy name. May we bring the word of hope to the nations, the word of life to the people of the earth. Come to 
you true wife would recognize thy deity by the fruits you manifest in our lives. Let us not derail from the Bible gracious laws. Because a shining light to this world.